thank you so much for inviting us here. And uh, I will discuss a little bit on the shaping the 6G uh, from a technology and service perspective. But first, I want to set actually the 6G in the context of 5G and see where we are with the 5G of today. So, if you look at 5G, we had a very fast pickup of 5G. However, it will be much more demands to come. And looking at the left-hand side of this slide, what we have passed actually in the beginning of this year was one billion subscribers into 5G. But thinking about it, that's one billion out of eight, which is actually what we have today. So it's less than 15%, so 12.5% about. And that will, of course, increase during the time. And if we just look at the uh, pop coverage that we do have, we see that we do have today about 35% of population coverage. So we have quite a lot further to go, so like two-thirds of the, of the world. Looking into the right-hand side, we see that we have a kind of a global mobility and the uses. And furthest to the left, we have actually normalized the amount of traffic generated in 2022. And looking into the predictions, we see that it expected to be about four times amount of traffic in 28. And out of that, it's almost two times only 5G mobility. However, we should also look into the right-hand side and see for the so-called so legacy technologies in this case, it still will be about the same amount of traffic expected. And also, we will see a quite large portion going fixed wireless. Very efficient to go if you have not rolled out too much optics already. So most of that fixed wireless is also expected to be on 5G, for, it for, for, for example, with the millimeter wave and so forth. Why is that also happening? Of course, all services will be more and more advanced, and that will drive the traffic and the users and the need in society. And if you just look at the circle, we know that the time period for all these kind of Gs is quite long. Ten years, we have heard, but that's ten years between start of a new technology. When do you have all the peaks as well? Is that also 10 years? Most likely in that time frame. Even though it goes faster and faster now. So from that perspective, we expect actually 5G to overtake 4G in the number of subscribers in 27. So it's not even in that space yet. So we are quite in an early stage with 5G. Just looking into the subscribers and looking into how that look into this region, so Northeast Asia and taking focus on that. What I have on the slide here on the left-hand side is actually the number of subscribers first for 2022 and expected in 2028. And we have Southeast Asia, India, and Northeast Asia. And what we can see is that we do have quite huge amount of data uses on 5G in 28. And I think that is also uh, driven by the data amounts that we will see. On the right-hand side, we also see the expected usage per user. And we see that Northeast Asia will have quite amount of data above the average. Actually, this region is actually very data hungry. And we expect that to happen further. And to the data rates per user to increase quite efficiently. That's basically back to more advanced services. 
And how should that happen? We, of course, need to see all these good features that we build into the networks, into the handsets and devices, needs to be a, a, applicable for uh, app developers. So the capabilities needs to be actually available from the networks up to those developers. And that we can do with API, exposing the capabilities we do have in the networks. And that is really important to see the innovation going in that space. So looking into the long term and the evolution of the networks, we will also see driven by all these new needs. However, if you look at the blue part here, we also see the 5G and the, the evolution of 5G over time. We will see that it comes this kind of evolution with new type of services, optimizations, new features and capabilities into the network. And also addressing more and more areas of interest for society. So actually, the full digitalization is only in the starting phase as well. However, that is, will be driven also by innovation by developers. And that is something we should actually embrace very much. So it's very important to have this kind of open 5G evolution and also to see. And from that perspective, most likely the smallest step to 6G will be those that has advanced users in an advanced networks to go in further to 6G, to develop that further. However, if saying this, this will of course be happening for a long period yet. But it's very important with these long cycles of these Gs that we're really getting the research started, the standardization started, so we get to those first network rollouts. And that is actually with the purple part addressed at that time. And to see that really to into the standards, really to get to this, this IMT 2030 time. But they will exist in the same time frame, and they would be still long to go with 5G. If we see those kind of 6G initiatives around the world, we also see that there is many areas where it's actually are really taking speed now. People are coming up, looking in the US, we see this next G alliance. In Europe, with all these uh, research activities, together with the European community and all these settings, we have this kind of uh, key projects running. We see here in the Asia-Pacific region, many things coming up, specifically Korea, Japan, India, and so forth. And we see that here in Korea, it's real activities. And that is also part of this kind of project, uh, convention that we are, are at, now, at now as well. So really to see that, and to see that the 5G forum, forum here now will go into the 6G time, to be 6G forum instead. And I think that is also important. There is a momentum of 6G, and we should embrace that and see that it happens, and we get that into position. And I think that is very important. Actually have the innovations, see that is happening now in this time frame. So looking into the 6G and the focus areas, and it has been discussed previously by the previous talkers, if we see in the, in the middle here, these kind of settings that we do have from the ITU and how this will be framed and so forth. But the key ones is actually that we go into some new capabilities, new target areas compared to 5G.
we go into this kind of merged reality situation. And that is actually one of the focuses. We see this situation awareness that we really will be in, 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 in facing now in 6G time. And this with massive twinning, how to relate the physical and the digital worlds together to be able to operate. And that also, if we see on the right hand side, will be very much about how to have this 6G to also address a lot beyond just the communications phase. What is happening, how to re relate it in the uh, society. And of course, sustainability. Thinking backwards directly to the da data amounts that will be generated in the networks. So the, one of the key is more with less. Less. So efficiency, power efficiency per bit into the network must be a focus, how that will be happening in the networks. And I think that is one key thing here, again. Coming back to this, I will also show a small video clip now, in just one minute, with a more like a vision of what could happen in 6G. And uh, there will be three different user scenarios at the same time. Uh, shown in this. One user scenario, we have a, a bus coming into a corner. We have a cyclist being there and see if something happens. We will also see someone doing some kind of shopping on a need basis due to weather conditions. When they see the avatar in the network and how that will be supplied. And we also will see a pair having kind of immersive type of experience, having dinner together, but they are at different positions. So let's have a view on that video. Uh, here, we see, here we see a bus coming towards the corner. We see also a bicyclist, and we see this emerging happening. Also see this pair that having dinner together. And also this use case when they try to see the behavior in, in the network. And the avatar can just look and how you then try to get information from the network to the position correctly. And here we also see how actually the network can emulate and find the way to avoid emergencies and so. This was a bit to reflect on the needs that we do see as well. We have this with this kind of human type of behaviors that we really try to address with 6G now. We have this with the really uh, all these needs with the man machine. We have this with the internet of senses and we have all these kind of things. Really 6G should see that we connect the physical world with the digital world. So we have this kind of cyber-physical connectivity in between. So we can do operation. And uh, from that perspective, what we saw in that small clip, video clip, was actually this happening, this hazarded position, the bicyclist coming through. And we have actually the uh, uh, kind of um, digital twin of the environment and also having all these sensors be able to try to figure out where all this happening and even though AI algorithm taking decisions on actually actuate directly on the brake on the bicycle.
to avoid this emergent situation. And I think that is really one key of uh, what is happening here. What is actually the difference is also with 6G. However, to have that vision to be going through, we need actually to have this kind of 6G very platform, creating trustworthy platform, really to see, thinking about it, thinking about it in that sense, really to, to actually see, thinking about also about how this, with federation of data, what will be required by regulation and so forth. Maybe also the business situation, maybe the bus company owning the data in the sense from the bus and so forth, how that relates to society overall and, what, and the responsibility of AI, the trustworthiness. It's not even only about communication to get, go to these kind of visions. And I think that is very important. So coming back to it, to the capabilities, we still have all the capabilities of the network. Basic is, of course, good performance, as we do have in the 5G, and going further, building on that towards further type of capabilities that needs to be there. And coming to that, but the base again, assuming that the data will be multiplied over time, many times, given that we need also to look at the sustainability into the networks. So more with less. That is a kind of key into that. Some technologies that will get us to 6G. And I got the message that I need to wrap up, even though I have not got my time, so sorry about that. But, so I will not have time to go through this. But it's very much, all technologies need to be qualified. And they also need to be able to be implemented from a commercial perspective in that kind of time frame of the 6G. And that is very important to remember. There is time for disruptions, time to get that into place, but needs to be able to be commercialized within the 6G time frame. Just a couple of words of 6G principles. Very important. It was discussed beforehand of this with the frequencies. Of course, very important what is happening next month at the VRC 23, what is coming up on the agenda items. And specifically, as been discussed previously also, this centimeter range type of frequencies from seven gigahertz upwards. Actually, one of the parts that really need to be addressed very much. So that will be, but most importantly, if we talk about 6G, we need to be able to operate them in all bands. We should also be able to, due to the different physical behavior on the different bands, be operating very efficiently with carrier aggregation and such. So in combination, open type of infrastructure and interfaces will be very important. We need to have a global friendly system for the ecosystem to grow. And I think that is very important. We need to have a reuse of the investments of today. So how actually to deploy this in an efficient way into existing investments? I think it's also one part. Just to finalize with a couple of slides on the timeline. We see that 3 d PP has of course aligned the process with ITU and the ITU process. And that is very important to see that we have that step forward going. And as well, the timeline, and this is Ericsson's view, perspective, 
where we are, with which is actually where there's a lot of trial, research, and start up and pre. -going. And then we will have a kind of social period, maybe starting 20, and then the first type of commercial setting, the 2930 time frame. And I think that will also conclude my presentation. Thank you so much.